right in the morning, usually around 9 or 10, uh, with a cup of coffee. Just about, like, whenever. I, I should start writing earlier in the day, but I just kind of, usually late afternoon. Uh, usually at 9 a.m. I like to write first thing in the morning. Uh, it's the most important thing in the day, I think, so I like to get it in. Typically in the morning, but I just try and fit it into my schedule whenever possible. I don't have a specific writing goal every day, um, though I do try to write every single day, usually right after I get up with my coffee, um, for at least like 20 minutes to 30 minutes, and then I'll write more if I'm kind of in the mood for it, but I always try to do at least that uh, minimum of 20 minutes and then uh, go from there. Uh, every day, I think I would like to either write 1,000 words of fiction or at least one poem of, of any length, which is kind of a, a, a cop-out, because obviously if I don't want to do a lot of writing, then I'll just be like, oh, I'll write a poem. That's not actually how it goes. Uh, my daily writing goal is usually one hour on weekdays and two hours on weekends. Uh, I find if I used to do word counts, and I find if I do word counts, then I sometimes try and speed right through it, and I don't really, you know, take the time I need to work on the craft. Um, my daily writing goal is to write. I don't really have like a word count or any set uh, limit. This actually is my writing space. Um, I have a desk set up. Over here, it's my own little office room uh, with my bookshelf, and yeah. Right now it's the, the dinner table, but it can be like a rolling table that I just roll into the corner of the apartment. Uh, right now it is a dinner table. I kind of like to keep my, my office or where I do work separate from where I write so that my brain knows that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, therefore, it's there to write. I sit at a desk with a 32 inch screen that I plug my laptop in because I like to see my work in like 48 size font. I started taking writing seriously around the age of 18 or 19 in my uh, second year of university. Uh, actually right after I moved to Saskatoon to attend the University of Saskatchewan. I wanted to write stories as, as young as like grade two and, and then I wanted to be good at it um, probably around like grade six, but um, as for like seriously, seriously, probably much later in, in, um, in university, probably like 23, 24. Uh, I'm a bit of a late bloomer. Uh, I started around 24 writing every day. Uh, in my undergrad, probably in second year, I really decided that I wanted to be a creative writer. The first book that I got really into, um, I used to read a lot of series, um, a lot of YA. Uh, I read the City of Bones series, The Hunger Games, um, the... Um, Chronicles of Narnia, Harry Potter, um, all of those were ones that I got a bit obsessed with. Uh, the first book I remember getting really into, uh, it was a collection of um, speculative fiction and uh, sci-fi stories. I think it was called Best of Fantasy and SF. It was uh, some book from the 60s. Uh, the Dragonlance series was, was what I remember getting into the most. Um, Gone with the Wind. And I was in grade seven when I read it. I would say that normally when I write, I'm by the seat of my pants, a pantser, some people would call it. Uh, I sometimes go in with a little bit of an idea or outline, but I never outline the entire story when I start. Um, or poem. I usually will go in with an idea and then that might spark create more of an idea of where I'm going. I definitely write by the seat of my pants. I'm a little bit of both. I, uh, I like to do a, sh a very short, very uh, thin outline, and then I write from that, uh, and then I'll usually go outside of that outline and kind of let, let the story kind of dictate where it goes. A mixture 
Um, it really depends what I'm writing and how much I've had, how much time I've had to think about it before I actually sit down. Right now, I'm primarily reading Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, as well as Sarah Enns' poetry book, The World is Mostly Sky. Those of those are my two books right now. Now I'm reading uh, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins and uh, Salem's Lot by Stephen King. George Saunders' A Swim in the Pond in the Rain. Uh, he takes some uh, Russian writers and kind of breaks down uh, their writing or their short stories uh, the way he does it in class. And it's kind of like a textual uh, version of his creative writing class. I'm reading a lot of books at once for different classes and stuff. But I just started Don Quixote, so that will keep me busy for a long time. A book that I would always recommend is the Michael Cardos, The Art and Craft of Fiction. Um, that one's a personal favorite for fiction writing and techniques. Also, uh, One Continuous Mistake by Gal Scher. Uh, that one is really great for creativity and trying to create a daily writing practice. One Continuous Mistake by Gail Scher. And you can't go wrong with Elements of Style by Strunk and White. You should probably just start there, regardless of whether you're writing fiction or poetry or, or whatever, because you get, um, you get the clarity from the Strunk and White, and then you just... And then you just write. You find your own voice, and then you write. Uh, other than that book, uh, my favorite books on writing are Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont and John Gardner's The Art of Fiction. I actually don't read many books on writing. I don't really like them. I, I find that they just give people a lot of information, but they don't really give tools on how to write. And I think it can be daunting for a lot of beginners. One short story that I always return to is called Midnight Licorice Shadow. It's by Becky Hadginston, and it's actually within the Michael Cardo's book. Uh, it's collected there. Another one that I always return to is by Karen Russell, and it's called St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. And that's another short story also in this Michael Cardo's book. So. Those are two that I always look to when thinking about craft and narrative structures within short stories. Oh, once a year, I usually end up um, reading Murphy by Samuel Beckett again and again, or uh, Grendel by John Gardner. For me, it's Stoner by John Williams. Uh, I think it was a New Yorker called it the best book you've never heard of. I think by now most people have heard of it. Uh, that was in 2011, I think, when that article came out, and Stoner kind of took the world by storm for the second time um harry potter <laughs> one thing that's been on my mind lately in regards to writing has been um particularly within the genre of poetry looking at memories and significant moments within life that uh stand out to me for some reason and have like um stayed with me over the years and then putting those on the page and trying to figure out why that might be just doing it <laughs> just um just sitting down and actually smashing off what what I need to um what I need to do with my writing that's what I've been thinking about thanks for me it's specific relevant and vivid detail uh John Gardner said that Vivid detail is the lifeblood of good fiction, and uh, I'm just thinking a lot about how I can create that mental movie in someone's mind. Um, how to be authentic but not give too much away. Uh -huh.